Let's go imagining together to a place so old it's always new. We'll tell a tale, my friends, to you and share a smile before we're through. And share a smile before we're through. I want to show you something today. Now, on this plate is a picture. It was drawn over 200 years ago by an Englishman. It was to be used on plates and cups and saucers and pitchers. Now, if you look very carefully, you'll see two doves. You see a tall willow tree. And down here is a little bridge. And three people, and it looks like this person here is chasing the other two. Well, another Englishman looked at this same picture, and he thought to himself, I wonder if I could write a story about this. And this is what he did. And today's story is about this picture. It's called The Willow Tree. Long ago in China, in the village of Hingshan, there lived a very wealthy man. He had a big, beautiful house surrounded by gardens and ponds. He also had a beautiful daughter named Li Ho, those who saw her said that she was the prettiest girl in Hingshan, maybe in all of China. Every day, Li Ho was dressed by her maid. Around her hair, her maid would weave fresh flowers in a wreath. When she was dressed, Li Ho would go into the garden to play beneath the willow tree. There it was cool and fresh, and the willow branches bent to touch the ground, like a green curtain all around her. It was her favorite place, and only one other person knew about it. Wang, the gardener's son. One day, as Li Ho and Wang were sitting under the willow, Wang showed her a walnut shell. Watch, I shall make a ferry boat. He placed a little stick into the shell. Then he cut a piece of paper into the shape of a sail and stuck it onto the stick. He set the walnut boat down onto the rippling water of the pond beside the willow. Off it sailed under the bridge which crossed the pond and out of sight. Li Ho and Wang ran onto the bridge to look for the tiny boat. From there, they thought they could see it among the water lilies near the peach tree. They ran to the peach tree, and there among the lily pads was a little boat. But as Wang lifted it from the water, he discovered a piece of paper rolled up in the bottom. He handed it to Li Ho. There is writing on it. Read it. It could be a message from the fairies. Li Ho read the writing on the little piece of paper. It was a poem. When the peach tree blooms, the willow shall cry, and Li Ho and Wang shall take to the sky. I don't understand, said Li Ho. Neither do I, but it must be important. We must keep the poem. So Wang put the poem into his pocket. Li Ho was holding the boat in her hand when she heard her father call. Oh, I must go. My father is very strict. Oh, how I wish I had a brother or sister so that he wouldn't always yell at me. Will you always have me, said Wang. Am I not like a brother to you? Oh, yes, you're more than a brother. You are my only true friend. Li Ho ran to find her father. He was seated on a cushion in the sunroom. He was angry. Who was that boy you were playing with? Wang, whispered Li Ho. Who? Speak up! Wang? Aha, I thought so. Did I not tell you that you were never to speak to the servant's children? The next time I catch you playing with Wang, I shall lock you in your room. Do you understand? Yes, Father. Li Ho wept softly. Now go wash your hands and face and stop crying like a baby. Li Ho went to her room and threw herself upon her pillows. And there she cried until she fell asleep. Li Ho's father went to see Wang's father, the gardener. He shook his fist and he stamped his foot. Keep your boy Wang among the rest of the servants. He's not to go near Li Ho again. If he does, I shall throw all of you out onto the streets and see to it that you never work again. Is that clear? Wang's father bowed low and nodded his head. His work, his life depended on this cruel man. He could only promise to keep Wang away from Li Ho. Several days later, Li Ho's father went to the city on business. When he had been gone some time, Li Ho went to the willow tree. Under the shading bough, she sat down to read. Presently, she heard Wang's voice from the branches above. Li Ho, it's Wang. 
I have waited for you every day. He jumped down beside her. Oh, my father's forbidden me to ever see you again, said Lee Hope. I know, my father has done the same thing to me. Oh, I have been so unhappy, Wang. Only today, when father went to the city, have I left my room. But now I am happy. We can be together as long as he is away. No one can spy on us here. So for the entire afternoon and all the next, Li Ho and Wang played together. They sailed the little walnut boat. I know, said Wang. When your father's at home, we can send notes to each other with our little boat. Then on the third day, Li Ho's father returned. You should be the proudest girl in China, for I have planned a bright future for you. I have been to the emperor's palace. And he has a young son who wants to meet you. So I have planned a grand banquet. If he is pleased with you, you might become his wife when you are 16. Li Ho was shocked. She could not speak. Her father bragged on, I shall be the father-in-law of a prince, practically a brother to the emperor himself. He will give me a grand palace in the city. Li Ho went to her room. She could not even pretend to be pleased. She did not want any prince. She only wanted Wang. She went out onto her balcony and wrote a note telling Wang what her father had done. And then from the folds of her kimono, she took the little boat. In it, she placed the note. Then she dropped the boat down onto the pond where it floated away. Many days passed, and soon it was time for the banquet. Maids and servants were dusting and polishing and painting until everything shone like new. Chefs brought in elegant dishes and pastries, and the banquet room was set for a splendid feast. The prince arrived. He looked like a toad. His eyes were small and beady. He had no neck, and his legs were long and skinny, and he pranced into the house like a marionette. Liho's father bowed until his nose touched the floor. The prince's servants unrolled a red carpet right up to where Liho stood, and the prince, who was nearsighted, pranced up to Liho, very nearly touching her. Very beautiful, very beautiful indeed. Your father did not lie when he spoke of your beauty. Liho looked down. She could not look at the prince. Oh, I trust he spoke true of your next birthday when you will be 16. Liho looked up in surprise and caught her father's eye. He gave her a stern look, and she realized he had lied about her age. He had added three years to her true age. She looked down quickly. Oh, you are all so shy and polite. I like that. Come now, be my guest at dinner. I have many exciting things to tell you about myself. No doubt you are bursting with curiosity. The prince led Li Ho into the banquet hall while Li Ho's father ran ahead of them, bowing and opening doors. Li Ho said nothing during dinner, while the prince talked on and on, and Li Ho's father refilled the prince's cup after every sip. Li Ho counted the hours till she could go to her room and be alone. Well, finally the banquet was over, and the prince prepared to leave. Li Ho breathed deeply. She tried to smile, but the prince's parting words froze in her heart. I will send for you when the peach tree blooms. Li Ho went to her room, remembering the poem from the fairies. When the peach tree blooms, the willow shall cry, and Li Ho and Wang shall take to the sky. When it was dark and the servants were asleep, Li Ho ran to the willow. It seemed sad and quiet in the dark. She found the little boat by the water's edge with a note from Wang. My father has made me stay in my room every day. I did not get to see the prince. The other servants say he's very wealthy. Please do not forget your friend Wang. Li Ho wrote a note telling Wang that the prince was planning to send for her when the peach tree bloomed. She put the note in the walnut boat and placed it on the water. Then she crept back to her room. When Wang found Li Ho's note, he ran to his parents. Please, you must help. The prince is taking Li Ho away when the peach tree blooms. She hates the prince. She does not want to be his wife. Wang's parents looked at him with sadness. And his father explained, We have lived many years on the work Li Ho's father has given us. He would throw us out if we did anything to interfere with his plans. Forget Li Ho. I care only for Li Ho, and she cares only for me. If you won't help us, I shall do it alone. 
Wang ran to his room to think. For the next few days, Li Ho stayed in her room. Each day, she went out on her balcony to see how the buds were growing on the peach tree. It would not be long before they opened. On the fifth day, Li Ho once again slipped out of her room after sunset. In the deepening shadow, she went quietly to the willow tree. There, she found the little boat with another note from Wang. We must be very brave, for I have a plan. On the day you are to leave, an extra manservant will come to your room to carry your baggage. That servant will be me. You must find a maidservant's uniform and have it hidden and ready to put on when I get there. We will run away together, dressed as servants. No one will notice us. Leo ran back to her room and thought. Then she too had a plan. She waited for the morning when the maid would bring her tea. In the morning when the maid arrived, Li Ho was standing by the window. She called to the maid. Please come and tell me if the peach tree will bloom tomorrow. The maid, without setting down the tray, came to the window to look out at the tree. Just then, Li Ho turned quickly and bumped the tray, spilling tea down the front of the maid's uniform. Oh, please forgive me. I'm so nervous and clumsy. I have ruined your uniform. Oh, that's all right, mistress. I have others. No, no, insisted Li Ho. I will take it and have it clean. Here, you give me the uniform and take my kimono. You may keep the kimono if you like. The maid's eyes brightened. She had never had a kimono so fine as Li Ho's, which she gladly exchanged with Li Ho. Li Ho put the uniform under her pillows where it would be waiting for her. Finally, the morning arrived when Li Ho looked out her window and saw that the peach tree was in full bloom. She knew that this would be the day when the prince's coach would come for her. Her maids had packed her things in a large trunk which stood by the door. She heard horses. The carriage had arrived. Oh, Li Ho was nervous. She quickly put on the servant's uniform. She forgot to take off her gold slippers. She waited for Wang. And after a moment or so, Wang burst into the room. Success, he cried. No one noticed me. Are you ready? We must hurry. Yes. Wang took the big trunk and the two of them went down the servant's stairs. As they stepped into the garden, one of the kitchen servants was at the window and saw them. Someone is stealing Li Ho's wedding trunk. Stop them. Other servants came running. Then Li Ho's father, hearing the loud shouts, came running. Someone is stealing Li Ho's wedding trunk. Li Ho's father grabbed his whip and ran into the garden yelling, Stop thieves! Stop or I'll flog you to death! But as Li Ho's father drew nearer, he spotted Li Ho's golden slippers. Those are not thieves. They are Li Ho and Wang. Oh, I shall beat them both. I shall lock them up until they starve to death. Li Ho's father was red with fury as he ran after the poor children. Wang and Li Ho ran as fast as they could, but the heavy trunk slowed them. Wang shouted to Li Ho, run ahead of me, cross the bridge to my father's cottage. Li Ho ran onto the bridge. Then, just as Wang stepped onto the bridge, Li Ho's father caught up with him. He drew back his cruel whip. Help, help, cried Wang. Li Ho's father snapped the whip forward. Through the air, the tip zinged until it caught Wang on the back, and there was a loud, piercing cry from the willow. The next instant, Wang and Li Ho were no longer there. They had turned into doves. Up they flew, out of the reach of the whip. When the peach tree blooms, the willow shall cry, and Li Ho and Wang shall take to the sky. Li Ho's father was unable to speak forever after. But Li Ho and Wang lived happily as doves. They built their nest in the willow tree and lived happy and together forever. You can still see them flying above the willow tree. <laughs>